Logan Kane here, and this is Shadowgate, episode 2. Let's just jump right in it. We took forever last time, but we found this little entrance. Alright, what do we got going on here? We got peering into the darkness. You drop down in the muck and crawl through the tight opening. The stone den is damp and smells of... copes and green foliage, as if a mirage. The far side of the cave shimmers and power emanates from a standing stone of bliss. Well, I guess I found that a bliss guy was Lemire or whatever his name is trying to get me to look at. So, well, let's look at it. The stone of bliss is nearly ten hands high. Oh, is this a horse? Embellished with strange glyphs and three deep notches, it hums with an ancient power that assures you it can be powered by a simple magical invocation. I'm going to go ahead and guess that it's Invoking. So let's invoke in this thing. You focus your will on the stone of bliss with a whispered bird. Your spill is unleashed. Ooh, what's this? A strange apparition. Man, they have some fun words in this game. I, don't, I have never seen that word. Coalesces? Well, maybe I have. From within the obelisk, the ghostly figure of an old man cloaked in a shimmering veil. Oh, we have a cutscene or something? You have done well, simple soldier. Oh, I'm a soldier? Now, listen if you have ears, since the shadows grow long and time fleet. Some forty years past, an evil, the likes the world has not beheld, escaped its prison, Talimar, the Black, he of whom I have already spoken. This warlock lord brought forth his dark magics and conjurations and unleashed his foul vassals, desecrating these sacred halls. Talimar has laid waste to the combined power of man. And what of the circle of twelve, the great wizards? <gasps> they are no more. I am the last. No, oh, I guess that's where that last skull is. Ha. Pity me not, boy. We were resolute in our judgment, but erred greatly. Could have been better to put our brother to death, but mercy and folly prevailed. I know not Talimar's full plans, but have discovered enough to fill my heart with fear. And yet, hope remains. And it stands or falters with you. Fare thee well. Well, if I was looking for ex uh, an explanation of what to do, he didn't really help. Lock me of the timeless va really vanishes, leaving behind a scroll, a glowing orb, and the words, Fare thee well. Congratulations, you have earned the wizard's friend achieve- Oh, I, I, an achievement? I played the game to a certain point, and that's the achievement. I didn't even do anything. Alright, what's this stupid thing? The clear orb has a silver scene about it. It's relatively light, vibrates with a dormant, expectant power. Well, let's just grab it. Whatever. It's a silver orb, I guess. Brittle orb. No, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to open it. Let's open it up. Take a look. You read the words on the scroll aloud. Five to find, three are one. One gives access the bladed sun, the silver orb to banish below, the staff of Aegis to vanquish the foe. Joining two, the golden thorn, the last to invoke the platinum horn. I don't know. What about this thing? Take a look at the thing again. The stone of blisk? Uh, Nothing special. But I saw something over here. Accidentally. It said the Wizard's Cove or something. Oh, I guess that's where I am. Okay. Let's press F2, see if there's anything. I can go back. Is that all I can do? Well, this isn't very helpful. I expected to get all sorts of helpful stuff, but... Circle of Twelve might not be around anymore, but their elemental pets still are. Maybe one of them could help you get out of these caves. 
I guess I'll go back. Well, I have no idea what to do now. Which isn't much different, I suppose. May as well see if one of these will open now. I mean... I don't know. My... Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to go through there. I didn't want to shut it. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wanted to lose my sister because I'm a dick. Well, why not? While I'm here, let's use this on the mirror. Okay. Can I go back? No. Let's go down. Blah, 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 blah. Let's just go back. I don't even know what I'm going to try to do. I'm a, I guess I'll try and throw the orb in the pit. I don't know what else to do. Alright. Let's use the orb there. Alright. I, I really don't know what to do. Yorick, help out, bro. Ah, you bastard. Well, what about here? So their pets are around. Hmm. What if I use the orb on myself? Give the orb a quick, <laughs> quick once over. You lick your thumb and rub away some greasy stain from its surface. You're startled by movement. Oh, that's... Can I use that up there? I have this orb. That's all I got out of that. I have no idea what to do. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's anything I can do here. I didn't want to look at the statue. I wanted to look at the book again. Only death to those who disturb the sacred altar. Strange markings and glyphs line the stone pillar that enshrouds the statue. One that depicts a hooded figure with a darkened visage. Well, go ahead and save, and see if I can get myself killed. Damn it. I haven't been able to do that yet. Alright, spells. You are going... Whoops. You are going to be one. No. I want you to be one. Really? I can't assign spells to numbers? Oh, right. I have to hold control. Derpy, derpy. Alright. Let's try one. Bounces uselessly. Okay, what about this one? Produces fireworks and a headache. Well, I'm out of ideas. Yeah, that's much quicker and easier. The only other thing I thought was maybe use the orb on the skull here. And if this doesn't work, I'm just going to be right back until I figure out what the hell's going on. Yeah, nothing happens. I'll, I'll be right back. And I'm back already. I just realized that there's a, I can walk in this direction. So let's do that. You can search and loot various objects using the open, searchable blah 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 blah. A series of ancient doors encircles a small hallway. It looks as if a battle may have been fought here long ago. What about this skull? The skull has a deep gouge in the back of its head, a telltale sign of a death blow from an axe. I don't think I can take it. Oh, I can. I'm going to try and go put that. Uh, as soon as I'm done doing other stuff here, I'm going to go put that in the wall. Yeah, something just fell. Ooh, what's that? 
You rummage through the sack and find a scroll. You put this in your satchel while discarding the sack. Is that something? No, it's not. Well, let us see what the scroll is. While the writing is difficult to discern, you manage to glean a few key phrases. The danger is real. Alert the surrounding lands. Seal off the passages into the Gatekeeper Mountains. The wax seal shows an eagle in flight and is signed by someone named Fendrilla. Fendriel? What about this? What's in there? Nothing's in there. Let's take a look. Cluster of bones. Well, I would love to mess with these doorways right now, but I need to satisfy my curiosity. So we're going to backtrack all the way back over here. Alright, game is saved, and where's that skull? Let's place this skull right here. You physically, you are physically incapable of getting the skull in the slot. It simply will not fit. Well, that's sad. I guess we'll just have to continue on through those doorways. There we go. It's not very obvious when I can go left and right. That's that's a shame. This door looks like it's going to kill me. So let's let's try and open it. No? Maybe not. Within a large cavern, you find yourself on the shore of a placid underground lake. Look, somebody's like hung up on the wall over here. It's hard to tell from this distance, but you think you see a skeleton chained to a rock. Perhaps you need to get a closer look. Somehow. Alright. What's our glowy things? Just those two? You sense something large and ominous deep below the surface of these black waters. There's lots of ominous stuff all over the place. Hmm. Alright. Let's continue on. Ooh, a wispy thing. A magnificent waterfall cascades from the mouth of an ancient stone statue, painstakingly carved into the cavern wall. Blow it, and on an undulating mass of water hovers playfully above the water. Okay, so that's just a mass of water that decided it wanted to float. Well, let's check it out. Hovering before you is an entity made entirely of water and mist. The liquid elemental continuously forms and reforms in a hypnotic way. You heard of magical orb. You've heard of a magical orb that can capture creatures like it. Okay. Is that what I'm going to use my silver orb for? Let's use my silver orb on this guy. Yummy, yummy. You slowly remove the silver orb and hold it out in front of you. A power from within the artifact immediately pulls the entity inside. Beads of water form on the surface of the orb. Well, that's interesting. Interesting in, uh, de indeed. A tall waterfall cascades down from... Oh, all right. You can see the outline of a cave below it. Well, that's... That's good to know. Stop. Guess I just have to click view. Alright, I want to press F2. I can barely see anything glow, but I can see this. Looks like a dwarven craftsman stamp. Well, just in case. Calming your mind, you draw on your surroundings, visualizing vivid memories of your childhood. Distract you, the subsequent backfires in spectacular fashion. I wonder if I can just right-click. That, that makes sense. Yep, nothing happened. I don't think there is anything for me to do here. You cup your hands in the water and bring them to your face, washing away the accumulated grit and grime from your adventure. Okay. But behind it is a cave. Let's take one more look. Carved into the out cavern wall, you can see the outline of a cave behind it. So can I 
I want to go to it. I guess there's nothing I can really do. What about this? Okay. Same thing as before. This? Yeah, there's nothing here. I... It would appear that the only direction I have to go is back. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to try and cast a couple of spells on that guy over there. That's nothing. And that's nothing. Alright. I guess we go back again. And we're going to go ahead and check out one of these other doors. At least I'm going to try. It opens just fine. I thought it was going to be all boarded up and I need to find an axe or something. Let us travel. Well, this looks terrifying. With stone tunes lining the walls of this musty crypt, there's an ancient, almost reverent air to this place. Alright. I'm going to open this and I'm going to die. Let's find out. When you open the tomb, a horrific creature is released, letting out a piercing cry that cuts into your very being. It's a banishee. Well, you've seen the visage of the Warlock Lord, and now you've been cursed. Both of these things are time limits in the game. It is important to both cure yourself before you die, and to stop the Warlock Lord before he destroys the world. Some objects in the game are flammable. Set an object on fire by using your current torch, the use icon, and the object you wish to burn. Be careful not to burn something that might prove useful later on. It's a banishee. Harbinger of death and disease. You feel a momentary stabbing pain before the specter winks out of existence. Well, I better use the torch on myself. Everything's all blurry now, because I guess I'm sick. A round orange item sits just inside the tomb. Well, let's see what it is. Another pumpkin. Your vision clears and the episode passes. Whoa, that was intense. Okay. So did the pumpkin cure me? I, I don't know. Let's open this one. The lid slides open with a grating moan. Use mummy on what? Uh, no. So that's also a mummy. They're very big on telling me that this stuff is flammable. The lid opens with an eerie creak. Alright. And what about this thing? The figure carved on the lid of this tomb has a mischievous fair look to it. It is holding one upside down torch. That's weird. Alright, well, I guess we're going to start lighting everything on fire. The ancient wrappings quickly glow up in flames. The ancient wrappings go up quickly as the mummy burns, a mask falls onto the ground. Strange iridescent glyphs line the inside of the crypt that give off a particular malevolent air. I didn't want to shut it. I wanted to grab the mask. Whatever. Let's burn more mummies. The wrappings are so dry they almost disintegrate in the flames. As it burns, a scroll tumbles to the floor, having escaped the fire. Oh, there's the mask. The horrible visage of this wooden mask resembles a witch from a children's tale. Well, I was told I'll need that. I don't remember how. A drawing of six rectangular shapes are drawn on the parchment. Several lines point to the shapes with writing underneath. You read two of the notations. The mirror leads through the furnace and into the castle beyond. These mirrors require power to activate and will transport to places stewn around the castle. Demesson? Whatever. I guess I'll. Ha I guess that means I'm gonna have to cast a spell on those mirrors in order to get them to do stuff. As the ancient wrappings open in flames, a sack falls on the ground. The sack is made from a thick burlap. 
Of course I take the sack. That's not really what I wanted to do. I wanted to open the sack. You rummage through the thick burlap, finding a scroll and two gears. You take these while discarding the sack. Well, let's check out the scroll. Open it up. The handwriting, the handwritten scroll is faded and difficult to read, but you can make out one passage. When Mahal's tail lights the northern skies and the alignments are in harmony, then sh shall ye take the circle runes of water and fire and the all-seeing eye and place them with the great eagle that sits on the one tree. This game sounds like it's got a lot of memory involved. I'm screwed. You failed to use the lit torch on the crypt, but failed to cut. Oh. Well, I wanted to light the upside down torch. I feel like I'm missing something with this crypt here. I'm gonna go ahead and take these. Wait, what? Huh. You hit the torch with a mighty punch that forces it downwards. You hear a mechanism release, then rumbling beneath you, you jump back as the tomb in the center of the room slowly moves across the floor, revealing a stairway leading down. These other ones are hit too. Well, now... Now I have to hit them all, right? I have no idea. Thought maybe. Whatever. Let's go. Okay. So I'm here again. Interesting. Well, let's try the last door. With a grunt, the door opens. Double tap a command key bind to lock it. What? You can then perform that command multiple times without reselecting re it. Right click anywhere to deselect a command or object. You can also double click on objects to look at them. On unlocked doors to open and open doorways to go through them. Teeth chattering, you stand with a cold cellar, hugging yourself for warmth. A creature made of ice, playfully, on the other side of the room. Well, does this mean I want to use my orb? Yep. When you try to use a silver orb on the elemental, it effortlessly dances out of your reach. So, double click on the object. That didn't work. Double click on that. Try as you might, you cannot light the ice elemental on fire. I guess I got a torch. It's always good to have torches. Congratulations, you've earned the achievement torch bearer. A chill runs up your spine and paralyzes your arm as you try to grasp the elemental. The creature easily dances away. You've heard a magical orb that can creature capture creatures like this. Right. But in order to capture the creature... The, the double-clicking bind thing isn't working. Alright, what do you have to say about this, Yorick? A little fire might warm things up in here. You can use a tor torch on objects to burn or melt them. Oh, what is this? Long white object is frozen inside this piece of ice. Well, let's try and use the torch on it. it takes a few moments. It melts away with a hidden scroll. No, no, no. Open the scroll. Damn it. Oh, okay. Some time ago, I heard goblins saying they had just taken over the castle. Just warning you. 
says Yorick. As you scan the scroll, one particular word, glyph gl glowing, power, realize, spell. Kind of like in Paper Sorcerer. It's like, oh, there's this thing, whatever. You sense a huge weight, like a stone opening itself to some mystery beyond. Well, let's go ahead and put that on three. Let's start casting spells on this thing. The chill causes you to miscast. And what about this new one? With a wave of a hand, you let loose the spell at your feet. Sparks and white swirls of magic dances around your boots for a brief instant. Well, let's try F2. Is there anything else that's glow-worthy? I don't see anything glowing. Guess I can't... I, I'm guessing I need a fire spell to cast on him so it slows him down. Let's go on. Now this guy is familiar. Except he was this dinky little red thing before. The smell of brimstone rises within this chamber. A pair of glowing eyes. Watch your every move from an opening in the far wall. I don't know what that F1 does. That's... We need to equip that right away. You lash the iron shield securely to your forearm. The dragon notices you move, moves its ponderous weight and begins gathering breath. Now, if I remember correctly, I don't know why I just stalled out there. If I remember correctly, I should be able... I don't know if I just need it equipped or I need to use it. But let's use the shield on the dragon. With halting, shaky steps, you move towards the dragon. With a roar, the ancient beast releases a scorching stream of fire at you. You raise your iron shield just in time to block the dragon's flame, dispersing it harmlessly to either side of you. Alright, well, what's this? Dented helm looks a bit small for you. Well, let's equip it. You swap one helm for another, unsure if the new one improves your look at all. This time, you can actually feel the heat. Well, what's this? It's a rib cage. It's a skull. It's a war hammer. Let's have two. Let's back up, first of all. Before the dragon can release a breath of fire, teeth chattering, you stand in the cold. I, I'm thinking that if I leave the room, my shield cools down, especially being in a cold room. And if I go back in, it'll be okay. So I can take the skull. At least I want to take the skull. You look the skull over, decide it won't help me. But I want to grab the hammer. That's for sure. While the shield protects you, it's glowing red hot. I guess that's it. I mean, what else am I going to do? Sense a great deal of intelligence behind the glowing eyes of this dragon. Intelligence and hunger. The hefty warhammer is finely crafted and inlaid with gold. What is this? Oh right, the gears. I know I'm. I know this is gonna end up getting me killed, but I I can't resist fucking with the dragon. With a shout, you launch yourself towards the head and swing the hammer over your head. Once again, it bays you in fire. You manage to raise your time shield in time to deflect. However, the fire is taking its toll on the shield and begins to melt. So do I still have the shield? You can barely hold on to the charred remains of the science shield. Doubt it will stand another attack. And this is where I back up. Now I'm going to try and use the shield. The ever so hot shield on this bastard. No, oh, that didn't work. May as well tr try the, uh... Try this Warhammer. Alright, well, 
I guess that's it for episode... What am I on? Two? I've already forgotten. Episode two of Shadowgate. Very, very slow. And there's not a lot of action. But hopefully somebody enjoys it. I know. I guess I'm enjoying it. I guess there's that. All right. I will... Well, yeah. See you next time. Enjoy.